Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here, uh, bringing you another video. This one's a little bit more advanced than some of the other ones that we've done. Uh, so, by default, the Home Assistant database runs on SQLite, and this tutorial is going to show you how to convert that to um, MySQL, uh, specifically MariaDB. Uh, so, let's get started. As always, let's start off by making sure our system is completely up to date. I'll fast forward through this so we don't have to sit around and wait for it to finish. Alright, so now that updates have finished. Let's go ahead and install a few of our dependencies. So we're going to install software-properties-common. And I'll put all these in the description so that you can just copy and paste them. Next we need to add in our uh, MariaDB source and the keys needed to access it. And I'll put all these in the description so that you can just copy and paste them. All right, now we're going to do a uh, sudo apt get update since we've uh, added a new source. And now we are ready to install MariaDB. So it's a MariaDB-server. Uh, as you go through the install, it will prompt you to put in a root password. Uh, this is just whatever you want to use to uh, set up as your kind of default admin password for MariaDB. Let's go ahead and install some of the MariaDB libraries. So we'll do uh, sudo apt-get install libmariadb-client-lgpl-dev and then libssl-dev. These are also dependencies needed in order for this to work with Home Assistant. Now we can install the uh, MySQL client. Now in order to actually convert the existing SQLite database, we need to do a sudo apt-get install SQLite3. And this will give us the ability to do the conversion. Let's go ahead and stop our Home Assistant service so that uh, we can start working on the database. Give that a second to stop. All right, so now we are ready to do that conversion. So uh, first off, we got to do a dump of the SQLite database. Uh, 
please check in the description below because these will all these commands will be listed in the uh, description so you're not having to try to read and stop and pause what I'm writing on the screen because it will be the same thing listed down below All right, so now we need to use a conversion tool. Um, there's all kinds of conversion tools out there online. This is the one that I chose to use. Of course, I'll have the link and everything inside the description. I thought it worked pretty well for what we were using it for. So it downloads it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move into the folder that it created when we downloaded it. And now we can actually do the conversion. And I'll put all these in the description so that you can just copy and paste them. Give that a second to finish. All right, so now let's go ahead and access our MariaDB database and create the actual database. So we get logged in with our root username and password that we created earlier when we set up MariaDB. And now we are going to do a create database and I'm just gonna call it Home Assistant. And then I wanna go ahead and set up permissions for that for a uh, specific username I'm gonna use has. And give it a password here. <clears throat> Go ahead and exit out of there. All right, so now we can use the new username and password that we set up to import that. Uh, SQLite database that we just converted just a little bit ago. Uh, we'll use our new username and password that we just created. And it'll take it a couple minutes to import here. Go ahead and fast forward through that. All right, let's go ahead and log into our database now that that's imported. Uh, and our password here, and we're gonna type in use Home Assistant so it knows which database we're talking about. And there's a few tweaks that we need to make in order for this to work uh, after the conversion from uh, SQLite. And again, I'll put all these commands in the description so you should be able to uh, copy and paste them uh, as needed. Trying to look at the number of entries for a run ID inside recorder runs. Uh, and of course I have 105. So basically we want to make sure we tell this that uh, we want it to auto increment. Alter table recorder underscore runs modify column the run ID and then here's where we're gonna say int not all <coughs> int not null auto increment and then auto underscore increment is equal to 106. Now 106 is just one more than what I already had of my total count, which is 105.
and then alter table states drop foreign key states underscore IBFK underscore one. And then we need to do one more. It says select max event ID from events. And apparently I don't know how to type. So let me fix that here. Add a close parentheses, there we go, from events, yep. And so we're gonna do the same thing. We have 185,321. We're gonna do the same thing to tell it to auto increment. So, except this time it'll be uh, events from the event ID column. Again, your numbers will be different. Uh, it's specific to your database, so when you're going through that, don't look surprised if your numbers uh, differ from mine. No big deal. And we're just going to increase that number by one. And it'll take it a second to finish that. There's a few more lines on this one. All right, so now we need to add in a line for a recorder to point to our new database that we created. So we'll say recorder colon. And then we're just gonna put in the uh, database DV underscore URL colon. And again, I'll put all this stuff in the description so you can just copy and paste it. So my username was has colon password. And since mine's local, we'll just say at localhost. And then of course the database is home assistant. <clears throat> now we're ready to start home assistant back up since we've finished making all of our changes. All right, we'll give it a second for the front end to come back up. And as you can see, mine came back up online. Um, no errors reported, uh, so everything looks good. So we should be good to go at this point. That is the end of this video. Hopefully it was not too hard, um, not too confusing, I guess. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of parts to this one. Um, it can get a little confusing with all the different things we have to do and the tweaks that we have to do to make sure that the SQLite uh, conversion to uh, MariaDB uh, goes fairly smoothly. Uh, if you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below. You can also feel free to email me at my email address, which was uh, listed there as well. Otherwise, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, please let me know as well in the comments, and I will get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you around.